Hey Zalivas, this is Super Zombie Guard Barbecue, and we're about to step into a new era of WWE Supercard. Why? Well, simply put, two new modes are going to come in. One later, one surprisingly just dropped right now, which is going to change the way you play this game, probably for good. And I'm going to talk about the positives and the negatives that come with that. Codebreaker is going to be shelved just for the time being. I've got a very special video coming out for Codebreaker. But today's video is covering two things. One is the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant and his packs. The standard packs you would expect the countdown packs. We've got them and we've opened them. There's something special and exclusive inside there. And you're gonna see exactly what I got very, very soon. And the other thing is Chart Topper, brand new game mode that potentially could be the biggest change that the game's seen for a long time because of the rewards and what that could do to change players' attitudes towards the game and how they play the game. Before we get started though, I'd like to know what your thoughts are once you've gone through the video in the comments section down below. Let me know what you think of Chart Topper. And once Code Breaker started, let me know what you think of that as well. I will say though, despite me not really digging the logo, Code Breaker's got a good vibe to it and I like that. I just hope it's not RNG dependent. Although isn't every mode RNG? Okay, let's hope it's not too RNG dependent. RNG meaning it's just a guess up in the air and see which one falls first. That's about that though, we're gonna talk about Chart Topper. This mode is going to be insane. It is a universal game mode that covers all of the players, all of the leagues as such. If you were to be counting PvP, it is everyone in the game can take part in this challenge, this league, this outright battle royale to the finish. You will get a challenge when the event goes live and it will go live until a certain date. For example, we have this one, the Get Reset, going on for six days, which means that for the next six days, every time you get a reset off the draft board, you get 10 points that go towards the chart topper. But what do you get from that? Well, the rewards are actually pretty plentiful, depending on where you rank. So we're going to go, first of all, down to the bottom, rank 100,000, and just to give you a bit of uh, context, around about 250,000 people plus play a Last Man Standing or a Clash of Champions based on the last stats that I, I saw, which was in-game people who had just played one game to get themselves to a position where they could see the minimum amount of people who played the game modes at that time. So, just by making sure you do your Wild Wednesdays and you play normally, you should be able to get this done. And it's not all about resets. There'll be different repeatable challenges, some challenges that aren't repeatable. I'm assuming one of those will probably be like get a new fusion or something. There's gonna be lots of different things that come up in this mode. As I stated on Twitter in a nice little long informational post yesterday. 100,000 up will get you 10 draft picks, which is cool. Why is it not 50 picks? If you just so happen to play the game on a regular basis, or not even regular, just semi-regular basis, you'll get yourself into the top 99,999 to 10,000 rank, which will get you a nice little exclusive draft pick. Now we go down to in the side, the top 10,000. If you was just to play normally and get yourself in the top 10,000, you'll get one WrestleMania 37 superstar card. You will also get 250 credits and four exclusive draft picks. And the rewards get better and better. You get chances at the Andre the Giant. Although I will say this to the guys at WWE Supercard, please put the odds in these things. I, I, I've said it beforehand, the other game which they create, NBA Supercard, has odds for free packs and quests. So why don't we have them in this game? Just saying. But from this point onwards, you'll get one of these card packs and these are Pretty special. You got yourself a Sheamus there, but it's two copies of one card. So it's a pro, a guaranteed pro. And as I said about the Andre the Giant, plus 800 exclusive draft picks and 500 credits. 
pretty special, right? Now we go up to the cream of the crop, almost the cream of the crop, because there's always a Hulk Hogan. There's always a Hulk Hogan at the top to spoil the cream of the crop. And this gives you pretty much exactly the same, except you're gonna get a thousand credits and 12 exclusive draft picks off the board. And this is the, uh, this is the big one. This is the, this is the Hulkster brother. Hulkamania, you get yourself a exclusive, probably the rarest item in the game. Number one in the world chart topper. 16 exclusive draft picks. A guaranteed Andre the Giant. An F1 card of any kind. 2,000 credits. And that is just absolutely army. So why is this great? Well, first of all, it's great for free to play players. This is going to be absolutely incredible for free to play players. I'm just going to point that out right now. This is brilliant. If you are just doing draft picks and stuff like that, then it's great for free to play players. If you start bringing in things like finishing fusions or doing multiple fusions, then that's where the waters get a little bit murky and could push this into a pay to play environment and every single draft reset that i'm doing i'm getting a little extra set of points 10 points added to the total which you'll see at the very end of this in fact i'm going to back out right now to show you what that looks like and you'll see i've got 40 points from doing four resets nice and simple thank you very much and i'm 16,000 752 and if that was to remain the same i would get myself if i have a look a nice exclusive draft pick and 25 picks off the draft board and i've already gone up a rank which is weird but okay another good thing about this game mode is it really encourages people to play that's where we start off with the bad points is it going to encourage people to play too much or burn out as we say because there is the risk that this could actually burn players out and actually end up being a regrettable decision to put this in the game. Just putting that one out there. The second thing that this could bring up is the problematic issue of rewards. You're gonna have access to cards that have been available to most people for a long time. Some people have already got themselves Andre the Giant cards, WrestleMania 37 cards. I think it needs to encapsulate more than just the standard cards. More credits would probably be welcome, super coins, those kind of things. I think those would be more appreciated than maybe getting a bunch of cards. A pro card, an F1 is great, don't get me wrong. But if you've already got yourself these, the person who's ranking number one, Number 100, number 1,000, probably down to 2,000, 3,000, doesn't need those cards, more than likely. Your average free-to-play player will probably rank within the top 10,000 at best. But this brings me to murkier waters, and this is something I don't like to discuss too much, but I'm going to have to on this part. It brings up the concern about cheating. And unfortunately, in every game, there are cheats people who do things that are dishonest and get themselves an advantage from using things that shouldn't be used in the game. I'm not talking about glitches and stuff like that. I'm talking about really bad stuff. And this is not necessarily a call out to the guys at Cat Daddy, but I think maybe this would have been better thought out if there was a good anti-cheat process available, which from previous Last Man Standing rewards and Clash of Champions rewards, etc., that just doesn't exist. Until a good, and dare I say, I mean this in the nicest way, responsible attitude to anti-cheat is brought into the game, there is no benefit to modes like this when people are going to use very questionable methods to obtain the top prizes. Now, just to clarify, this is just week one. Week two, week three, week four may just have completely different objectives. You might just have get an event card for one or uh, complete a card on an event or something else like that. Maybe you would have those as objectives instead of this. But this challenge specifically brings up the biggest problem that the game has, especially when it comes down to a modes like Codebreaker. Leaderboard based modes always create opportunities for people to push the boundaries too far. And if that's not being monitored or enforced, creates 
a potential massive problem, massive problem in game. But I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments section down below. We do have, of course, the Andre the Giant packs to go to. So uh, let's go to it. Let's end this on a positive because we've got packs to open. Let's open some packs. Let's go. The eighth wonder of the world. Packs. There we go. We got these packs, which are honestly just the standard countdown packs. But do they have anything good inside them? I'm not sure. Well, the odds are the, the same stuff at the beginning. You're kind of expecting it to be a bit. Eh. No? Uh, eh, not really. Nah. Nah. If it's got Hall of Fame cards in it, I will be very, very, very pleased. I'll be a very pleased little bubba. The 200 for the first one. Let's open it up. It's a flash of Morgan Webster. Talking about people being released. He's not one of them. Aha, I got you there. Let's go. 400 for the next pack, which has, yeah, odds. Yeah. But, oh, oh, you got my heart, Supercard. You got my heart. Hall of Fame cards. I love it. One of my favorite card sets. I, I wish this was a proper Hall of Fame style event with brand new Hall of Fame cards, but the likelihood is of you getting some of these lower down cards is it's almost reversed. Like the likelihood of you getting the cards at the bottom less. You get two of these cards. You're more likely to get yourself a Hall of Fame superstar for Cataclysm and for SummerSlam. Let's go. First of all, we're going to get Classy Freddy Blassie and then Honky Tonk. Seriously, just the leg. I mean, I, I got to be honest with you. I thought I hated these cards because the glow is just awful. And but this is like the only Blassie card we've ever had. So we need to, we need to get him in more into the game. Be more Blassie. He had the amazing season one support cards, which anyone who's a long time OG of the game will remember those. Those were just, if you got two of those, you you won the game. You, you you might as well have just sat back, put your feet up and just gone, yeah, I've won. You've, you've won the game, basically. Supports were insane. Let's go for the next one. Uh, oh, Hulk Hogan and the Swarm? From Starship. It's the Starship Brother. Starship Brother, Brother. Brother, Brother. Let's go for a woman, the ladies. It's the ladies' turn. Five of ten, two ladies, and the odds are trash. To be expected. Yep, two vanguards, awful. And the next, oh, oh, okay, okay. I am a big fan, so you get the, the chance of another set of Hall of Fame cards. But this, that's very cool. I like that a lot. That is really sweet i'm a big fan of that card back so you get yourself that free card back you got mark henry oh the godfather uh both of them are pros so it's all good uh we got andre the giant card back though i am definitely definitely applying that as soon as possible 1500 credits goes to pack number seven and this 1500 credits the odds are still really bad though like these odds have been reduced because that's kind of crappy. Let's go. Three Royal Rumbles. Well, the odds are you're going to get 30% chance of getting Royal Rumbles. So, yeah, just bear in mind this when you're opening these packs. If you decide to go and open these, bear this in mind because they've changed the rates. They've changed the, the percentages. And I, I think that's a bit... That's a bit... Ugh. Not cool, Card Daddy. That's really not cool. Like, you're spending, like, 9,000 odd credits to get yourself, you know, 25% chance of a Royal Rumble. That's kind of stupid. Just a bit awful. Uh, th yeah, that see, like beforehand, you almost guaranteed yourself you got yourself like a swarm or a behemoth in the eighth pack. This is like incredibly uninspired. The pack odds are awful. Like, the, the, I have to say, there is no incentive for me to buy these other than just to do it, just to get myself this, which is the Andre the Giant card. This is what you want. This is this is the main part of the packs. The rest of the packs. Apart from the Hall of Fame cards, are just, ugh. which is really disappointing. They could have done so much, much more with this. But let's go, Andre the Giant. It is a pro, and that is awesome because this card is a beauty. 
But first off, we're going to have to go back around again to grab ourselves some more Hall of Fame cards because I do have some that are sitting in my catalog right now that I still need to pro. So I'm still going to do the first two sets of packs and I'm going to claim these and then I'm going to be done. Kevin Nash and the Godfather. So I'm now leaving the rest because, again, I said it to you guys, the odds are awful. Unless you're doing it to get anything else, do not do these packs. If you're doing it for Andre, perfect. If you're doing it for any other reason other than the card back, stay away. Because those odds have been changed and they straight up just ain't good. But hey, you go and do whatever you want. It's your money, not mine. But hey, listen, doesn't matter. We're going to go and use these new WrestleMania uh, equipment, by the way. New WrestleMania equipment that I've just gone, which I dust boots, lots of boots. Those big Andre the Giant boots are going to come in very handy. Although he's not exactly the fastest wrestler. Wasn't known for his speed. Let's put it that way. Uh, we're going to pro Andre the freaking giant look at that beauty thunder and lightning going off behind it and you got the camera flashes and i was watching wwe the other day actually the old attitude era stroke the rest old wrestlemania days well you know what wwe's missing now the camera flashes right they were in the in it back in the day who remembers seeing the images like uh the best one i can i can tell you from memory is edge spearing jeff hardy off the top of the ladder uh from where the, the the belts were located and in the, TL the tlc match at wrestlemania the amount of camera flashes that are going off in the background everywhere it's just blinding it just looked great anyway there's andre the giant i've got myself a pro that is what i was after and he's nowhere near as as good as some of the other cards have got like He's not better than Mick. And unless I get a, like a big, big, like uh, like a crazy amount of these cards jumping at me, this is how it's going to stay. We're going to have Andre and it's going to be behind Mick Foley and Mankind. But it's still better than the spring cards. So 